selfishness, the enemy of progress. Pride is always ready to strike through any barrier, ready to hunt down any prey. And who more full of mammon than the Rothschild family? The Rothschild family is presumed to have begun in Frankfurt, Germany by Isaac Elkanen Bakharak in Frankfurt in 1567. The meaning of the name is Red Shield and stands on the coat of arms to this day. However, the family did not begin to acquire great wealth until 1744, when perhaps the greatest entrepreneur of all time devised a plan. His name was Mayor Amschel Rothschild, and the only reason you recognize his name is because of the rags to riches tale he has. Mayor was born to Amschel Moses Rothschild in the Jejengasse, or the ghetto of Frankfurt. Yes, you see, Mayor was actually just a name. Amschel was a money changer who, one day, had the opportunity to trade money with the Prince of Hesse. Mayer would become a court factor for the German landgraves of Hesselkessel in the free city of Frankfurt, Holy Roman Empire of 1760. This simply means he would help manage funds for the government. This would give Mayer the skills he would need to succeed with money and help him start acquiring a small amount of assets for the next step in the journey. Mayer would set the stage for the Rothschild values of charity and discretion. You see, in these days, it was not uncommon for court factors to have any money they made be taken from them and given back to society. But because of his discretion, Mayer was able to sequester the small amount of money he made and start up his business as a small bank of the community. And using the skills he learned as a court factor, he was able to grow his bank and teach his five sons the skill of banking. Now the bank was established, Mayer would set up his five sons with one in each of the world's economic powerhouses. In a reference to Psalm 127, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. The success and dynasty fortune that this brought was incredible. One of his sons, Nathan Mayer Rothschild, in London, was speculated to have contributed the most to the family fortune. But recent research suggests that James Mayer de Rothschild in Paris, Carl Mayer von Rothschild in Naples, and Amschel Mayer Rothschild in Frankfurt made a similar amount of wealth, if not more. Unlike the court factors of earlier centuries, who had financed and managed European noble houses, but often lost their wealth through violence or expropriation, the new kind of international bank created by the Rothschilds was impervious to local attacks. Their assets were held in financial instruments, circulating through the world as stocks, bonds, and debts. Changes made by the Rothschilds allow them to insulate their property from local violence. Henceforth, their real wealth was beyond the reach of the mob, almost beyond the reach of the greedy monarchs. And the royals also enjoyed the ability of the Rothschilds. Being able to know that your bank will care for your funds and that those funds are tied up on other shores is a great asset. This is particularly the case in a time of war. And, as we'll see, 
The only war profiteering the Rothschild family did was being trustworthy, even in a time of unrest, which is of course very profitable. Entering the Napoleonic Wars, the Rothschilds were invaluable. Truth be told, though, the family had acquired a vast amount of wealth beforehand. The family had, by this point, developed its own state-of-the-art way of correspondence. It was so sophisticated that they knew the result of the Battle of Waterloo a whole day before the British government intelligence messengers arrived. With the information in hand, the family stuck by one of their key values, and, with integrity, the first concern was not to the potential financial advantage on the market which the knowledge would have given them. Rothschild and his courier immediately took the news to the government. They then bought up all the British war bonds, which appreciated greatly as peace began. By this point, the Rothschilds were elevated to nobility because of their assistance in multiple countries. The Rothschilds had been able to hide a vast portion of their wealth, by this point, with discretion. By the 19th century, they were the most wealthy modern family in the world. But as the tale wraps up, the true mystery begins. The Rothschilds have donated incredible fortunes to charity, and continue the practice to this day. And it's not just money the family has donated, but since they had one of the largest private art collections in history, they have donated many pieces to public museums. Art is a good example. They kept the pieces safe during unrest by purchasing them, and then gave them to the people, usually completely anonymously. It is a marvel that investigators have been able to find out some of the family's deeds. Who knows how many more are hiding from public eye. They have even liberated entire nations, such as Brazil, by granting the country a cheap loan to peacefully cut ties with Portugal, with a treaty negotiated by the family for Brazil. Paul Johnson writes, The Rothschilds are elusive. There is no book about them that is both revealing and accurate. Libraries of nonsense have been written about them. A woman who planned to write a book entitled Lies About the Rothschilds abandoned it, saying, It was relatively easy to spot the lies, but it proved impossible to find the truth. I have not the nerve for his operations. They are well planned, with great cleverness and adroitness in execution. But... He is in money and funds what Napoleon was in war. Baron Berry on Nathan Rothschild. I'll see you next time.